Hey everyone, how's it going and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at how to create a galaxy looking sci-fi heads up display or map or whatever you want to kind of call it, whatever you want to turn it into being all within Blender, all using geometry nodes procedurally created within Blender. You can obviously take what I'm doing and customize it to be whatever you want it to be, but I'm just going to kind of show you how I've made a, a setup similar to this. And then you can take it, run with it, do what you want with it. If you want to skip this tutorial completely, you can head down below to a Gumroad link where you can download the file from there. Save yourself some time. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel for more Blender content and give this video a thumbs up. That would really help me out. So within a new scene, we're going to head to the geometry nodes tab. Make sure that ambient occlusion, bloom and screen space reflections are turned on in our render settings. And we've got our default cube selected. We're actually going to use the default cube, surprisingly enough create a new geometry node setup, but delete the group input, which will delete the cube, but don't worry too much about that. I'm going to add a mesh primitive and add a UV sphere. We're then also going to add a instance, instance on points node, connect the mesh of the UV sphere to the points and instances to the group output geometry. I'm going to also add a mesh primitives and a cube, basically going to be the dots that appear and plug that into the instance. So what this is doing is we're, we're not going to render the actual sphere itself. We're only going to render the points of the sphere and these cubes, we bring the size down to maybe 0.1. You're going to see actually basically being rendered on the vertices of our UV sphere, which is great for creating a sort of grid like looking effect. If we bring this down even further to 0.05, then we'll really get this kind of small dot like effect. On the UV sphere, we can actually change the radius as well, bring it up to maybe three just so the scaling's right and then maybe on the cubes now we can bring that back to 0.1 just so we're not dealing in tiny tiny measurements. Now that's looking really cool to me. If we actually go to the UV sphere and bring the rings to be 32 as well, so it's 32 by 32, then we get a much more even looking effect because by default the 16 rings leave some gaps. Now what we can do here on the instance on points, if we change the rotation and the scaling, you'll see that each individual cube is rotating on its own axis by that amount. Same with the scaling. We're changing the size and the rotation of these individual cubes, which is cool for making these really interesting looking effects. I mean, I, my mind goes crazy with the type of things you could do with it. But in this case, we don't really want them to be stretching too much. But the rotation value is cool. Now to see what we're doing a little bit more before we go any further, let's create a basic shader. So what we're going to do is just delete our principal BSDF from this material here and add an emission. Just call this something like HUD1. Connect the emission to the surface. And then in our geometry nodes, add a material, set material, and set that in between the cube and the instance on points node. Select our hard one. We're going to material preview, bring the emission strength up. There we go. Kind of see our got our glowing looking effect there. But it's a bit boring. There's no there's no variation in the color, it's just one color. How do we actually give some randomness? Well, not necessarily randomness, but even control to this. Well, we're gonna add an input object info node and a converter color ramp. And if we change this to constant, move, connect the color from the color ramp into the emission and the random of the object info into the fact of the color ramp, then every single cube that's being rendered will be given a random value on this color ramp depending on which location it's in. And the percentage that the colors take up on the color ramp is the chance of this color appearing on your material. So if we had even more in, if we had a little bit of red in there and just make it a tiny amount, it would mean that, you know, we're only going to get a couple of cubes with that red on there, which is cool to sort of highlight some, maybe some bad data points or whatever. You know, this is up to you. I don't know what you're going to use this HUD for, but this is really great in creating this basic HUD effect with different colors and variations to sort of show different data points throughout. If we bring the scale down a little bit more again, see already we're getting this nice looking uh, effect. Now, how do we change the scale of the sphere it's, itself? Because we want to animate it so that it can move around. So to do this, we're going to go to Shift A, Geometry and Transform and plug this in between the UV sphere and the instance on points point. This is great because what we can do now is control the individual axis of the translation, rotation and scale of the sphere to be whatever we want. We can rotate it on the Z, we can scale it on the Z. We bring the size down maybe a little bit more. You know, if you really spill this out, you can really see the cool sort of shape of the UV sphere as it splits out. We can rotate it on the Z, we can rotate these individual cubes. 
let's bring the radius back up now so we're seeing these smaller points and what's cool is if we bring the scale all the way up it looks a bit like a tunnel but if we bring it down to zero on the z you get basically a disc looking shape which is really really cool and that you know obviously looks a bit like a galaxy maybe if you uh rotated this around not even like a galaxy that kind of looks like a targeting system or whatever you want it to be if we bring this out it turns into a planet so you could really shift between um and i just animated this in the video you can shift between a, a flat plane you know a flat circle out into a sphere to go from galaxy to planet what we can do as well is we can actually animate the colors of our hud as well so it doesn't have to be fixed to do this if we go to the uh we add a timeline in here and on our color ramp if we insert a keyframe on the position of our red value go along to maybe frame 100 move this slider along on the position and then insert another keyframe you see over time it's going to add more of that red into it so you can show data being added or taken away you know maybe something's gone wrong maybe you're sort of analyzing a planet and uh you know stuff's really going down on the planet and you want to show uh, stuff's being overtaken alternatively as well as changing the, um, the percentage of that color you can change the color itself so on the actual color in this bottom here if we insert a keyframe make it yellow and then by the end of it we go down to red insert another keyframe on that color not only is it going to go from yellow just maybe like oh warning things are a bit bad as we go along it will actually shift to completely red the other thing we might want to do is uh, add some rotation to our sphere as well so it looks like the planet or, you know the display of this planet is spinning as well so if we add a keyframe on the z value of the rotation in the transform node and go along and do 360 degrees at the end of our timeline add a keyframe in there and select the interpolation mode by right clicking and changing it to linear we're going to get this perfectly spinning sphere that we loop around by the end of our timeline what we can do as well is maybe up the amount of vertices on our sphere so segments and rings make it 64 it's really really detailed looking sphere now if we do the thing i was saying about if we bring the scale on the z down to zero we'll get the same effect but instead of it being on a planet you know now we're looking at more of a, a galaxy grid i guess what we could do is increase the you know if we increase the height on the uh, the actual cubes themselves you get this really looking really cool depth to the galaxy as well what if we wanted to add some control to the depth of this you know in in this galaxy we want to show that some areas are bigger than the others how do we add some variety to this well on the scale or instance on points node if we had a noise texture and a color ramp we're basically going to use the color of this noise the black and white values to influence the height of our points if we connect that color ramp in there you'll see just using the black and white values we can now control the scale of these cubes and by plugging this noise texture in, it's using that image of the noise to influence this even further. So we get this randomness in it. And if we change the details on our noise texture, the scale, the detail, the roughness, the distortion, and then crush these black and white values on the color ramp in, you really start to see just how much that's influencing. It's important as well to change our noise texture from 3D to 4D, so we can actually move this texture around using the W value. And there we go, if we get these settings, as you see them on the screen now we can really see where there are these sort of gaps in the galaxy which is which is really cool and the next step from here really is using that w value if we animate this if we insert a keyframe and move along the timeline change this w value again then it will basically be moving this texture throughout our galaxy we kind of looks like it's alive but if we change that maybe to be 10 instead of one and then hit play there you go kind of yeah you can see that texture moving throughout the cubes are changing height relative to the noise texture if we just just bring the emission back up make sure we can see the uh, the color and uh switch this back to a sphere yeah you get this really nice looking effect of the planet it looks like it's being scanned which is really really cool now another thing we could do is but to really create a, to add a bit more depth to this what we can do is duplicate the cube and material and instance on points connect our sphere to another set of these create a join geometry node and connect all of these together what we can do is create a second set of points that are the cubes and we can actually make these bigger but have we can make the largest scale bigger and the smallest scale smaller and duplicate this noise texture and color ramp plug that into the scale 
because our base cube size is now smaller at 0.2, we now bring the black down so that the biggest size is bigger than our grid below, but our smaller size is smaller than the grid below, then we can start to see an overlap where this new layer will only cover some of them, but then we'll see the grid underneath. And this could be cool to create the idea of potentially, you know, just a different layer to your heads up display. We could make another material here, make it more metallic, bring the metallic up, the roughness down. Let's make it like a sort of ready pinky color and set the material to be that HUD one. It's very cool looking glossy effect. So whereas you've got our emission shader on the one below, which is emitting these dots of light, you can then change the color ramp. And there you go. I mean, you again, change this to be whatever you want it to be. But now we've got this sort of, almost looks like it's alive, almost an organic looking heads up display. Almost looks a bit metallic, a bit meshy. It reminds me of Horizon Forbidden West. And if we connect this noise Actually, if we connect this original noise texture with the animation on the W value into our color ramp, then that will also animate as well. What we could do, yeah, if you also just want to animate the uh, the UV sphere as well, change the scaling. You can create the illusion of a maybe a warp tunnel or a galaxy or a planet or a plane. If you animate and shift between the two of them, just in certain keyframes, you can create this morphing looking heads up display effect. You can make this whatever shape as a base you want it to be. If we plugged a cone in instead of a UV sphere to this transform and just made sure that there were more segments on it instead of just the top and the bottom layer, the exact same thing is going to apply. You see the texture moving between it. Whatever shape that your base mesh primitive is, is exactly the shape that uh, our points are going to follow. We could do a cylinder or we could do a cube as well. Play around with the size and scaling of it on our transform node. And there you go. So that's it. I hope this video was helpful in allowing you to create some cool looking heads up display, galaxy technology looking effects for you to have within your scene. And maybe maybe you're not going to use it specifically for this, but you might be inspired to create different types of effects from it as well. This is a very sort of Tesseract looking effect or the uh, I guess the all spark from the Transformers films. The, the possibilities are sort of are sort of unlimited within this. Again, all the materials, everything completely customizable to be whatever you want it to be. If you enjoyed this video, remember that there is a link to download this from Gumroad in the description below. That would uh, really help me out. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing and give the video a thumbs up if it helped you out. I've been Toby and I'll see you in the next video.